We turn now to the latest development surrounding the Americans held hostage in North Africa by terrorists with links to al-Qaeda. Today, after a chaotic rescue attempt, U.S. officials tell ABC News they believe at least three Americans remain in captivity. ABC's chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz, has the latest details. Tonight, somewhere in this sprawling natural gas complex in one of the most remote parts of the Sahara Desert, some Americans, along with at least 15 others, including British and French, are being held hostage by Islamic militants. It began at dawn yesterday when 20 heavily armed militants attacked buses carrying the Americans and other workers around the Aminas gas plant. A firefight broke out, reportedly killing one British citizen. The hostages were then rounded up, reportedly forced to wear explosives around their necks. We spoke exclusively to Defense Secretary Leon Panetta here in Italy, who had no doubt who was behind this. I don't think there is any question that, uh, based on what we do know, that this was a uh, terrorist act and uh, uh, that the terrorists uh, have affiliation with al-Qaeda. But tonight, the situation is even more dire after the Algerian military tried to rescue the hostages in a raid that clearly went terribly wrong. The Algerian armed forces have now attacked this compound. It is a very dangerous, a very uncertain, a very fluid situation. And I think we have to prepare ourselves for the possibility of bad news ahead. The Algerian military operations began this morning. With no warning to the U.S. or British, the Algerians moved in with helicopters, fearing, they say, that the militants were trying to escape. The Algerians say they managed to kill some of the militants, but hostages were killed as well. Well, there, I mean, there were, uh, I think, about 100 people that were involved uh, in the, uh, the facility there. Uh, how many of them are actually being held hostage, we just don't know. At least some of the Americans did manage to escape, as well as Irish worker Stephen McFall. McFall told his family how he leapt to safety from his vehicle after it came under bombardment. What are you going to do? When you, are you going to have a party? Are you going to give him a big hug? I'm going to give him a big hug on a party. But the fate of the Americans still held hostage, and the others is unknown. Tonight, many families are preparing for the worst amid growing reports of casualties. The mastermind behind the mass kidnapping is thought to be this man, 40-year-old Mokhtar Belmokar, said to be an al-Qaeda commander in North Africa, a one-eyed veteran of the Afghan conflicts, called Mr. Marlborough for his criminal smuggling, and said to be uncatchable. The militants say they attacked the complex in retaliation for a French-led assault in neighboring Mali. France intervened last week to repulse an Islamic insurgency that was threatening the capital, opening up a new front in the war on terror. This attack against Western interests and against against Western lives uh, in particular will have huge uh, consequences on the whole region. Uh, the global war on terror, which has so far focused on countries like uh, Iraq and indeed Afghanistan, is now shifting in Africa. One jihadist leader warned that the French action had opened the gates of hell. There is no proof of the link, but many believe it is not a coincidence. It's a direct consequence of the French intervention in the ongoing crisis in Mali. Algeria has openly supported uh, the French intervention, and it seems that it's a, a revenge attack against such a support. But in this complex tonight in Algeria, the situation is far from over. A U.S. surveillance drone is now flying overhead, and U.S. officials are hoping that somehow those hostages still inside can make their way out alive. For Nightline, I'm Martha Raddatz in Vincenza, Italy.